examples provided by Glock HB or the Cockatiel. Amen. And thank you. And thank you, Glockenspiel, for ushering us into this time of worship. Welcome to Worship Caldwell. It is a joy and an honor to welcome you. The psalmist tells us, I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. And little did we know that we would be referring to our own homes as the house of the Lord, but certainly that is what it is. It's been a stormy week outside. It's been a stormy week for some of us inside in our lives and our families. And so it is a good thing to be here together in worship. Let's uh, look at some announcements to share with one another what's going on in the life of our church this morning. Today, we are grateful to be led in worship by Reverend Don Flynn. Dawn has been pastor of the New Life MCC in Gastonia and formerly in Charlotte for six years. She is bivocational, clergy, North Carolina trans activist, and a scientist, entomologist, who has been published internationally through the Smithsonian Journal of Entomology. Dawn has been married for 42 years to the same woman through transition, two grown sons before transition. Dawn has been a friend of Caldwell for many years, and we welcome her to bring the word to us this morning. We continue with our weekly offerings of Preacher's Porch online at seven o'clock on Tuesdays, um, so we can check in and look back at the prior Sunday sermon and the upcoming Sunday scriptures. Zooms will be sent through uh, our blog early in the week. On Wednesday, you can join other Caldwellians for an informal time via Zoom to check in with one another from 5.30 until 7. We're calling it Caldwell Live. A member of the staff will start the meeting each week and then leave you all to it. On Thursday, I'm sorry, and we have a special uh, opportunity coming up this week to join Caldwell's Cyber Table for MECMEN's upcoming annual Community Leaders Award Breakfast on Wednesday, this coming Wednesday, May 27th at 7.30 a.m. on Facebook Live. The program will highlight the award winners and celebrate leaders in the greater Charlotte area. Since its inception in 1987, MECMEN has been bringing people of faith together across differences to create community while strengthening bonds of friendship through Charlotte and Mecklenburg County. A link will be sent out before the event and you can contact Helen Hull with questions. On Thursday, we will continue our uh, 8 p.m. gathering time for Vespers. All are welcome. And we uh, invite you also to continue to stop what you're doing at 9 in the evening. We invite all in the community to pause what, at, wherever you are each day at 9 to gather and connect through the Holy Spirit in prayer. It's been a beautiful opportunity for us, and I hope that you will continue to join us in spirit and in truth through prayer. Next Sunday is Pentecost, and we will share photos that you send in of spirit moments in your everyday life. Please send your photo by tomorrow, Monday, May 25th to Anne. Please folks, send us pictures of how God has been showing up, how the spirit has been moving in your lives during these weeks of separation from one another, because we know that we are not separate from the spirit. The spirit is always at work. And so we really invite you to send in some photos. And if you have any announcements that you would like to share, feel free to post them in the chat box. And you can also send them along to Anne via email if you would like to have an announcement spoken next Sunday morning. Friends, that's a lot. It's all good. And it's a lot. And so I ask you now to join me just for a moment to calm our breath and our hearts to breathe in God's peace to breathe out any anxiety, to breathe in God's presence and love, and to breathe out peace to all those around us and for ourselves. So breathe in, breathe out, and let us do what we have come here to do. Let us worship God. Will you join with me in our call to worship? Shout for joy. 
sing songs of praise. God reigns over all the earth. Let us give our thanks and praise to our creator God. For God's love and mercy never fail. Let, Let us worship, worship God. Will you join with me in prayer? Our creator God, we come before your holy presence. We give you praise and glory for this beautiful day. We give you praise and glory for your creation. And we give you praise and glory for your son, Jesus Christ, who you sent into this world to live among us, to show us what true love is, than to die for our sins at Calvary and raise again on Easter morning to go home in heaven to prepare a place for us. We give you praise for this time of worship. We thank you for the opportunity to join together in this worship service. We thank you for the advancement in science that allows us to do this over the computer since we're not able to meet in person. We ask you to keep us in your care as we're unable to meet together as one body, but we know that we will soon be able to do that again into corporate worship. Continue to guide and direct us, continue to guide and direct the leaders of Caldwell, and continue to guide and direct the leaders of our country as they direct us and protect to protect us from this disease. This we lift to you in the precious and glorious name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, as we pray together and say, Amen. And now we will sing for everyone born. We're going to sing the first three verses now and three more verses later in the service. Let us sing together. Thank you. 
Amen. God will delight when we are creators of justice. Caldwell, I want to invite you. There were there are two things that I forgot to say during the announcement time, and I want to just mention them now. One, please go to 2020census.gov and fill out the census. If we want to see some movement toward justice, we each must be represented. Please, let's do our part. And also, I want to wish our beloved Miss Janie a happy 90th birthday this week. May God bless you. We thank God for your life. And now friends, let's remember who we are and who God is and how God sees us and loves us no matter what we do. And at the same time, we are called, invited to confess before God and one another where we have gone wrong, where we have not created justice, where we have moved and lived against joy so will you join with me now together as we pray the prayer of confession. Let us pray. Together we pray aloud before God and each other saying, living God, we confess that our faith is sometimes weak. Our love for others can be faint. Our prayers are often timid and our gratitude is frequently unconvincing. When we stand looking toward heaven, yet feel far from you, you draw near in mercy to forgive us and fill us with your power. Through the grace of Jesus, our resurrected Savior, amen. I am enormously grateful that the God who welcomes us to confess our sins has promised that when we do that, we will be forgiven. And so in the name of Christ, friends, we are forgiven. The peace of Christ be with you. In the name of Christ, we receive God's gift of grace. May the peace of Christ be also with you. Friends, I invite you now to extend God's peace and joy and love toward one another. Peace, peace of Christ be with you all. Peace be with you. Peace of Christ. Christ, everybody. The whole church is watching. Peace. <laughs> so no time gone. Oh, yes, it oh, 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 o
to see you again. I have another special book for us to read today. And we've read this one before in Sunday school. But we're going to read it again today because you know how sometimes when you read a book the first time, you don't catch everything. So we're going to read it again today to see if we can find some more new stuff. This book is called A House for Everyone. Lunchtime is our favorite part of the day. We build a house for everybody. We collect everything we need from around the playground. I'll get the sticks we need, says Ivy. It won't take long. She is the fastest runner in our group. She gathers sticks from all over the playground. Ivy is a girl. She likes to have her hair cut really short. Her favorite clothes are shorts and a t-shirt and she never ever chooses to wear a dress. I'll build the house, says Alex. I'll make sure it holds everything together and does not fall down. Alex loves to build. They have the biggest Lego collection of all our friends. They take the sticks that Ivy has collected and carefully balance them up against the fence. Alex does not feel like just a boy or just a girl. They feel very uncomfortable being called he or she. Alex prefers people to use their names, Alex or they. And there's a picture of Alex building Legos. We love Legos. I'll decorate the house, says Sam. When I have finished it, it will look amazing. Sam is very artistic and loves putting different colors together. He collects flowers and leaves from all the different plants and trees in the playground. He drapes them carefully on the house. When he is finished, it looks beautiful. Here's a picture of our friend, Sam. Sam is a boy. He loves to wear his hair long. His favorite sport is basketball. Sometimes when he plays basketball, he wears his hair in a ponytail. We will need something to sit on, says Jackson. I'll take care of that. Jackson is very, very strong. He carries the biggest, heaviest rocks from the playground into our house. The big flat rock makes comfortable seats for everyone. Here's a picture of Jackson. Jackson is a boy. He loves to wear dresses. At home, he has a huge collection of sparkly shoes. Dresses are not just for girls. Clothes are for everyone we can all wear the clothes that we like. What about a sign for visitors, asked Tom. I'll make that. Tom loves spelling. He uses small rocks to spell the word welcome at the entrance of our house. Tom is a boy. When he was born, everyone thought he was a girl. They gave him a girl's name, but this made Tom very sad. When he grew up, he told everyone he was a boy. Now everyone calls him he and Tom, and this makes Tom happy. With all of us working together, the house is soon ready. Ivy brings her dinosaur collection into the house. We make a rock mountain for the dinosaurs. Jackson brings his tiny teddies into the house. We each get to hold one. Alex brings their Lego into the house. We build a Lego playhouse for the teddies. Tom brings his favorite joke book to the house and tells us some funny jokes. Sam brings his basketball to the house. We go outside and play basketball for a while. Other friends come and join us. The house starts to get really crowded. To the monkey bars, everyone. We all love the monkey bars. Even though we are all a little bit different, we are all still the same and we are all friends. So just like in this book, how all the children got to make a house to play in together, God has built a house for all of us to live in together. And we're all different. We look different, we sound different. We have so many differences. And the best thing we can do for each other is to recognize those differences and celebrate them. 
So today, Emily has a special prayer for us that's going to close us out. So I want you all to close your eyes or feel God deep, deep in your heart, however you feel comfortable praying. Speak nice and loud. Dear God, thank you for making us all different and thank you for inviting us all to live in your house. We love our differences and we love you. Amen. And as we say to our friends in church every Sunday, may the Lord be with you there. May the Lord be with us here. Thank you. Amen. Good morning. My name is Quentin McGill, and I am a proud member of Caldwell Presbyterian and glad to be here with y'all today. Let us pray. Pour out your Holy Spirit, O oh God, and prepare our hearts to accept your word. Silence in us any voice but your own, so that we may hear you and also obey your will. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Today's scripture comes to us from Galatians chapter 6, verses 26 through 29, which reads as follows. For in Christ Jesus, you are all children of God through faith. As many of you as were baptized into Christ have clothed yourselves in Christ. There is no longer Jew or Greek. There is no longer slave or free. There is no longer male and female. For all of you are one in Christ Jesus. And if you belong to Christ, then you are Abraham's offspring, heirs according to the promise. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. So good to be here with you. And before we start, will you pray with me? Lord, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable in your sight. O oh Lord, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. I am so honored to be with you today and to share some thoughts with you about God's love being for everyone. I thank Heather for that wonderful children's time, which just fits so perfectly into the sermon. God's love is for everyone, regardless of ethnicity, sex, or gender. As the author of Psalm 139 states in verse 14 in the NIV translation, where it says, I praise you because I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Your works are wonderful, and I know that full well. Up until 13 years ago, there's no way you could have convinced me that I was fearfully and wonderfully made. For I was living a lie that I had lived for 58 years. I was unhappy in my own skin. All the time growing up from age eight, I felt I was a girl trapped in a boy's body. I longed to be a girl in my dreams and thoughts. And when I looked in the mirror each day, I cried and died a little each day. What I saw in the mirror that is my body did not match what I felt was inside. I struggled with what I've been taught growing up in the church, and that is that we shouldn't mess with nature. God doesn't make mistakes, and if we mess with it, we're committing a great sin. My faith told me I could never be a woman, but my mind kept telling me otherwise. I had mixed prayers. One night I would pray that God would take the female feelings away. And the next night I would pray that I would wake up a girl. All my life I struggled and did all I could to be what the church said I had to be. That was a male. I married twice and had two sons. Each time I married and had kids, I kept hoping that each action would quote unquote, make a man out of me, but it never did. I even went to alcohol to drown my sorrows, but that didn't work either. So I desperately, 
I so desperately wanted the torment to end. I felt the call to the ministry in a dream when I was 12 after completing confirmation in the Lutheran church. But I wrestled with my call. I kept saying, how could I go into the ministry when I didn't even know who I am? In my times of reflection, I decided that my problem was I just didn't understand the scriptures well enough. So I committed myself to follow God's call and go to seminary and learn the scriptures. And then God would give me the strength to be the man that God created and the world said I had to be. In my search for a seminary, God came to me in a dream and told me that I was truly being called into ministry and he would make it happen. And God did. I went to Duke Seminary and did very well, but I didn't find my answer. My spiritual soul was still in torment. I then decided I just needed to answer the call to ministry and serve God's people. I was appointed to three Methodist churches over a period of 10 years. The three churches I served loved me, and I saw God working through me to bless the churches, but I was reported falsely to the United Methodist Conference that I was shopping and parading around town, dressed as a woman, and so the United Methodist Church told me that God's love for me was on shaky ground because I was living deliberately in sin and that I was sick. All because I had given my all to raise as much money as possible for a noble cause that is relay for life in a womanless beauty pageant. I was labeled an obsessive compulsive crossdresser. Yes, I had some gender identity issues, but they were limited to private times, except for the pageant. That was the first time I'd been in public dressed as a woman and they had never gotten in the way of my ministry to the churches that God called me to serve. I've been raised to believe that the church was God's hand in the world, spreading the good news of Jesus Christ to the lost. And that hand, the church, was blessed by the Holy Spirit to correctly interpret the Holy Scriptures. Therefore, if they said I was sick and that God's love for me was on shaky ground, then there must be some truth to what they were saying. I was devastated. The district of the United Methodist Church that I served in called a meeting and I was severely chastised and made to feel unloved and unwanted. And I was bullied into surrendering my credentials and I left the church in disgrace. Within two months, I made plans to commit suicide, believing that I had lost all that I wanted to live for, my family, my friends, my church, and the church said also God's love. What was left? But God stopped me from committing suicide. The Holy Spirit came to me again in a dream and stopped me. It told me to talk to a therapist, and the Holy Spirit led me to a therapist in Charlotte that happened to be one of the best in the world who treated transgender people. And she was a Jew. And she loved me more than any Christian, especially in the Methodist Church. She opened my eyes to see that God loves everybody. She said I was just being myself. That is what God had created me to be and that I was fearfully and wonderfully And for the first time in my life, I was free. I was free. Galatians 3, 26 to 29 in the NRSV says, For in Christ Jesus you are all called of God through faith. As many as you were baptized into Christ have clothed yourselves with Christ. No longer Jew or Greek, no longer slave or free. There's no longer male and female, for all of you are one in Christ Jesus and if you belong to Christ, then you're Abraham's offspring and heirs according to the promise. Apostle Paul says there's no longer male and female. 
That means the traditional gender boxes, the binary system of, of genders as society and the church classes people doesn't work for God, for God sees the heart. And in God's eyes, we are all one if we believe in Jesus. Well, now I know that the church was wrong. Now I know that I don't have anything to be ashamed of. Now I know that I am fearfully and wonderfully made by the wonderful, loving creator of us all. Now I know that God has loved me from the beginning. I remember Jeremiah 1.5, God tells Jeremiah, before I formed you in the womb, I knew you, and before you were born, I consecrated you. I now fully understand what God meant in those words to Jeremiah. My mother had 11 miscarriages, seven before I was born and four after I was born, trying to have a brother or sister for me to play with. But I lived. The doctor said I also should have died. But I lived because God had a special job for me to do. So growing up, I'd always wondered what that job was, and I never knew until I embraced being transgender. For you see, like in Jeremiah 1.5, God and Jesus knew I was going to be transgendered when I was still in my mother's womb. And I was consecrated to be trans. Now I know that God has been preparing me my whole life for this very time. I had to go on the journey to prepare me for my ministry. My ministry is to reach out to those LGBT folks that have been told by the church that God doesn't love them. To tell them that God and Jesus' love is for all humankind. The Holy Trinity's love is always there and we should not let anyone tell us otherwise, regardless of who they represent or what label they put on us. God provided the financial means for me to successfully become the woman that I've always felt I was in January of 2011. Hallelujah, thank you, Jesus. And I'm learning every day that the only way you can successfully be what God has called you to be is to love yourself. I had never loved myself until I embraced being transgendered and becoming my true self. I have never been happier in my life and I've come to understand what God meant when God told the gospel writer John in John 3, 16, for God so loved the world that he gave his only son that whosoever, whosoever believes in him should not perish, but have eternal life. God's love is for everyone, not the selected few the church deems worthy. And I am proud, I am proud to be a whosoever. In Jesus' holy name, amen. Amen, Don. Thank you so much for sharing with us your story and the way that God's love has shown up in your life. Friends, I invite us now to take a moment to think about the ways in which God's love has shown up for us, even when others have said that God's love was on shaky ground. Amen and amen. Thank you, Dawn. We are going to continue now in singing for everyone born. We'll sing the final three verses, and I'm going to get you started with words, and then I'm going to focus on the piano. 
so I can hear you, Caldwell, the way you sing this hymn so enthusiastically. Let's do it. Thank you, Anne, for leading us in that. And what a wonderful message it is that God will delight and God does delight when we are creators of justice. Friends, let us now continue to affirm our faith and what we believe about God's love as we read together the affirmation of faith. Caldwell, what is it that you believe? God's sovereign love is a mystery beyond the reach of human minds. Human thought ascribes to God superlatives of power, wisdom, and goodness. But God's love is revealed in Jesus Christ by showing power in the form of a servant, wisdom in the folly of the cross, and goodness in receiving sinful people. The power of God's love in Christ to transform the world declares, discloses that the Redeemer is the Lord and Creator who made all things to serve the purpose of God's love. Friends, giving of our time and our talent and our energy and also giving of our financial resources are all ways to affirm our faith. Our faith that God will continue to provide for us, our faith that God can use what we give to provide for others. And I ask that as you consider and give thanks for all that God has given you, that you will Ask God for wisdom and discernment about how to continue to support the work of Caldwell.
the work that Caldwell, that God is calling us to do in the world, in our community, within the walls of our church, those who are in need, outside of our church. We are so grateful for all that God is doing through us and, and ask that you would continue in your affirmation of your faith and your faithfulness by sharing with Caldwell. You see now on the screen the um, link on our church website as well as the street address of the church where you can share with us just a little bit of what God has given to you that we might continue to work, do the work that God has called and commissioned us to do as God's people at the corner of Fifth and Park and at all the corners where we find ourselves today. Thank you. Okay. All righty, too many buttons to push at once. Gail, thank you for that good word. And Dawn, who sits right here beside me, thank you for your word. Uh, beautiful and personal message uh, in which God speaks. Thank you. Friends, I invite you all now to jump into the chat, if you have that function, and uh, share your joys and concerns for the week, uh, what is happening in your lives, so that other members of the church can read that and pray specifically for what's happening with you. I will share that we had a service for Leroy Stinson yesterday, and uh, it was a glorious and healing moment, as odd as it was to gather with masks for me to preach and give a eulogy with a mask on. Uh, but then we uh, went to the cemetery and did a graveside and released doves and saw in that symbol the release of his spirit. I uh, was reminded that Leroy was uh, loyal and unhesitant in that fall of 2006 when that small band of folks came over here to the corner of Park and Fifth and joined together with the senior saints who were still barely holding on to keep this church alive. And uh, Leroy was such a steady and beautiful presence with us ever since. I know all our hearts and, and our faith uh, were touched by him. So please do uh, take a nush, uh, another moment, if you'd like, to add your joys and concerns to the chat. Uh, your staff will review that and we'll be praying for you. And uh, I'll just give you a moment to do that now. Would you please pray with me? God of giving and God of grace, God of might and God of mercy. These liminal days stretch out and our hearts reach for you. On this Memorial Day, make us rightfully mindful and grateful for all who have made the ultimate sacrifice and at the same time, by your hand, teach us the ways of peace so that such sacrifices might not have to be made. In these COVID days, we're sorrowfully aware that our nation passes a milestone now of 100,000 people who have died of this virus that we are still working to understand. Each was a person of your own making, a child of your own love, with their own story, their own gifts and experiences and perspectives and contributions to our country. Help us to honor them in how we live. We're mindful also that 40 million people in these last few weeks have lost a job or filed for unemployment. Make us a generous nation, Lord, that we may stand in the gap for them in these hard times, those who would work, deserve the dignity of help when they cannot. 
make us mindful of all of the rest of us as we continue to experience the isolation and separation of these days. Help us to not hesitate to name the truth and reality of the anxiety, the depression, and the sadness that these days will bring. Help us to find relief in you, but in those around us. We ask for patience and the generosity of spirit to be with each other when our world is not fully available to us. Grant our leaders ongoing wisdom and forbearance at the global and national and state and local levels. As governors face difficult decisions about how to reopen their cities and their counties, and as religious leaders face the same decisions about when and how to reopen the doors for corporate worship, give us all special anointing of your wisdom and your grace and your guidance that we may know what the common good is over any individual impulses. Lord, we thank you for this church, for its call and instruction. As we have heard preached in Psalm and Galatians and throughout the Holy Scripture that we are all fearfully and wonderfully made and you came for whosoever would believe speak to us by faith yes but also by science that we may understand the depth and breadth of the glory of your creation of each of us as your children reassure us that leroy rests in your arms and as we go back out into the world, open our eyes and hearts and souls and minds to what we can do as a people in these days. Be at work within us to let us not leave this time, though uninvited. Ensure that we not leave it unexamined and unchanged in our environment in our economy, in our balances of power and privilege, and in all the systems and institutions in which we express the best, express the best promise of our constitution and its allowance for all and not just few. And so we make this our prayer and you hear our unspoken prayers. As we say the prayer that Christ gave us, saying together, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. And all God's people said, Amen. We are going to end our service today singing, They'll Know We Are Christians, one verse. We often sing it in a joyful, lively way at Caldwell. But if you're like me, I remember singing it around a campfire in my teens and 20s at a little slower pace without any accompaniment uh, as a, a reminder of the importance and the essential sense of love to be shown. So please join me now in singing a cappella. We are one in the spirit we are one in the Lord. We are one in the Spirit. We are one in the Lord. And we pray that all unity may one day be restored. And they'll know we are Christians.
Christians, by our love, by our love, yes, they'll know we are Christians, by our love. Friends, we invite you to remain on the chat as we wrap up our service today. And Dawn, once again, we give thanks for your ministry and your witness and your presence with us today. Now receive the benediction of our Lord and Savior. Go, go in the name of Jesus Christ, your Lord and Savior. Go knowing that you are fearfully and wonderfully made. Go knowing that the Holy Trinity is with you always. And go knowing that all are created in God's image and treat all others as God treats you. In Jesus' holy name, amen. Okay.